residents of the Virgin Islands paid homage to the late Honorable Hamilton Laverty Stout through a recital for his love of song on Monday, March 7th during the 21st annual H. Laverty Stout Memorial Celebrations. Welcome to the 16th annual commemorative birthday celebrations for the territory's first chief minister, the late Honorable Hamilton Laverty Stout. We have come today to pay tribute and reflect on the life of a true visionary of these beautiful Virgin Islands. Mr. Stout dedicated 38 years of uninterrupted service for the people and these islands. He held many visions, but his greater vision was to see a united Virgin Islands where natives and residents alike would work together in harmony for the betterment of these islands. So on this, his holiday, today some will give their formal say. And we know it is not to immortalize him, but it is with respect and honor that we have come to offer an appreciative token. The late chief minister loved music, singing, and concerts. So today, we have come to pay tribute to him in song, a foundation gleaned from the Methodist Church. The recital which highlighted the first chief minister's life as a Methodist lay preacher was held at the Rotom Methodist Church. Presentations were conducted by Methodist Zonal Choirs, the H. Laverty Stout Community College's Stingray, the BVI Heritage Dancers, the H. Laverty Stout Community College's Commemorative Choir, the school's Mass Choir, and the H. Laverty Stout Community College's Jazz Band. Remarks were delivered by Premier and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith, OBE. Excellency, Governor John Duncan, Mrs. Duncan, members of the cabinet of the British Virgin Islands, members of the House of Assembly, members of the family of the late H. Laverty Stout, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today we come together as a community to remember the life and legacy of H. Laverty Stout. Not as a visionary leader he was, but as a man of God who had a passion for singing and music. History tells us that the love of God, music and singing has long run through the veins of Virgin Islanders. In fact, during our emancipation celebrations, we often hear the story of how our forebears had tremendous faith in God, and despite the tough and unknown conditions, they toiled in the blazing sun, singing melodiously. They left for us a unique culture and tradition that Mr. Stout himself embraced, and that is why we are honoring his legacy in the form of recital today. The story is told that as a young man, Mr. Stout became quite fond of church. In his early years, he would accompany his grandmother and mother to the Methodist Church in his community and was always excited about his experience. I can particularly remember him telling stories about the enjoyment of wearing his Sunday best. In those days, we were accustomed to having two pairs of pants and two shirts. And one had to take care of them with pride, especially if they are brothers and sisters to come along behind you. Those are the stories of the day. I even remember him giving tales about his church shoes. He had to take care of them and watch where he walked in them because they cost 10 cents a pair. <laughs> and that was a lot of money, an expensive pair of shoes. But going to church was an event, and everyone had to look their best. You were always sharp going to church in those days. Many of those who grew up with him remember young Laverty in Sunday school as one who was always knowledgeable about the scriptures, often quoting many passages. You see, as a proud Methodist, he took a liking to preaching. He would listen quite attentively to the preacher's sermon, taking every word. Then when he returned home, he would find a quiet place and practice to preach, reading the Bible aloud and carefully pronouncing his words. When Laverty became a Methodist lay preacher, his magnetic personality drew people to his sermons. When he spoke, he got attention. He had a particular ability to connect with his audience, to move people, and to get them involved in his message. 
His sermons were candid. He loved to use parables and he loved analogies, often tying the stories of the Bible to everyday living. It does not wonder that his proverbial favorite is where there is no vision, the people perish, one that he applied as he led his territory. Mr. Stout loved music and he loved to sing. One of his favorite songs was How Great the Art. And it was said that when this song was being sung, his baritone voice could be heard reverberating through the church, sometimes overpowering the choir and congregation put together. A one could stay from the foot of the hill or miles away from the church, and the only voice that could be heard singing lustily was that of Mr. Stout. In 2014, in recognition of his love for music, in celebrating his many achievements for the territory, a musical tribute was held in honor of Mr. Stout as the territory's first chief minister. It was titled, A Musical Tribute to a Giant of Ideas. I can't remember the event as it was just yesterday. It was touching, and I know that today will be no different. Mr. Stout had a great love for his people. He loved this territory, and that is why he worked hard to build a physical and social infrastructure and to lay the foundation of a sustainable economy. It is important that we continue to restate his story, and more important, that the younger generation and those who come to live among us continue to hear about his good works and how he made strategic decisions to modernize the infrastructure so that the BVI could become a competitive jurisdiction. Electricity was brought to every home, roads were paved to connect every village, clinics were built throughout the territory, and healthcare services were made available to all. We must continually be reminded that he made provident choices, like the introduction of the Social Security Program, which is of tremendous benefit to us today. We must also reminded, be reminded that he led the charge for port development to welcome commerce and that the foundations for tourism as one of the cornerstones of the economy was also part of his vision. Most importantly, we must continue to be grateful to him for his commitment to educational development so that Virgin Islanders are given the opportunity to participate in and grow all sectors of the economy. These are the many songs that Mr. Stout has left behind for us to build on today. We honor his unwavering commitment to us. I look forward to enjoying the rest of the program. Thank you. Zone 3 Methodist churches continue the recital as they perform the Methodist hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. The representative for the 1st District, Honorable Andrew A. Foy, also delivered remarks as he stated that God honored the late Honorable Stout's faithfulness by allowing the former chief minister to complete his assignment before his due date on May 14, 1995. During school days, we all have been given assignments. These assignments had due dates for which they were to be handed in so that they could be graded. If you missed getting the assignment completed and failed to turn it in by the due date would result in you getting a failing grade for the assignment and at times also for the course. The moral of this example in terms of life is very simple. Each of us must complete our assignment before our due date. Our assignment is our purpose. The late but great H, Honorable H.L. Stout completed his assignment before his due date. In his earlier days, he may have been looked at by some as a nobody. But that so-called nobody as referred to by only a few completed his assignment before his due date with such distinction that today he is known to all as somebody whose life was led by God and touched everybody. H.L. Stout Community College was his baby that he birthed with assistance from many. Today, H.L. Stout Community College continues to touch everybody in a positive way. Drake's Highway, that in my opinion should be renamed H.L. Stout Highway, takes us from West End to Rotong daily and vice versa while allowing us to enjoy the breathtaking view of our beautiful Virgin Islands coastline, seawater, 
and sister islands. This accomplishment continues to impact everybody in a positive way. This is yet another one of the late but great H.L. Stout's accomplishments. The list of his accomplishments is endless. It will take us all day to list the many great accomplishments of the late but great H.L. Stout. However, for me, his greatest accomplishment was that he served the Lord our God with all his heart and with all his soul. He understood that only what was done for Christ will last. He understood Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. He understood entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So with songs of praise to the Most High on his lips and in his heart, with his bones full of purpose, he praised his God. He served his God. He worshipped his God. For this reason, God honored his faithfulness to him and allowed H.L. Stout to complete his assignment before his due date of May 14, 1995. Minister for Education and Culture, Honorable Myron V. Walwyn, delivered remarks during the event as he stated that Honorable Stout was a leader ahead of his time. Honorable Stout was, in his every being, a true leader, rising above the fray and boldly taking the Virgin Islands and its people to new and greater heights. I believe he was able to accomplish this and accomplish as much as he did because he was a leader that saw no value in putting down his people, but sought instead to empower them, to challenge and to lift up those around him that also thought to advance the Virgin Islands. He loved the Virgin Islands and its people very much. That in many instances, he risked his political life to do the right and just things for his territory. His love for the people that he served inspired many of his decisions that led to the residents improving, having an improved quality of life and improved road, road network that connected our villages, access to tertiary education at home in the Virgin Islands, and strategic efforts to build and grow our two main industries that have provided jobs and opportunities for Virgin Islanders. By leading with love and empathy for his people, Stout remains one of the greatest politicians and leaders in the Caribbean 20th century. And there's a page that we can all learn from him because it is very difficult to lead people if you don't love people. And H.L. Stout loved the people, and the people loved him back. As I recall his life in preparation for today's ceremony, I quietly ask myself if he would have been proud of our achievements to date. How would he look on us? And I've concluded that he would have been proud that the age of the Stout Community College, for instance, that he envisioned has been accredited and will provide even more opportunities for our people to gain knowledge and access to universities and opportunities around the world. I believe that he would have been proud that we have diversified our tourism product and have invested and continue to invest in developing our ports of entries. He would have been proud that our financial services industry has remained innovative and robust despite the challenges and obstacles it has faced. He would have been very pleased that this country at this time in its development was being led by a man, Honorable Dr. Diolando Smith, who also has a deep love for this country and its people, just like he did. I believe he would have been proud to see the growth of Peebles Hospital and to see the many local faces in such a modern facility, working as administrators, doctors, and nurses. I believe his heart would have been full as he sang our beautiful Virgin Islands territorial song and see fellow, fellow Virgin Islanders and residents smartly dressed in our territorial wear. I believe he would have been very proud that in general, we have been good stewards of this country, that he and so many other Virgin Islanders of the years gone by have labored to develop. 
Just over 20 years since the last time Honorable Stout debated our annual budget, our Premier Dr. Dion Orlando Smith, OBE, in a few weeks, will lead the debate in the House of Assembly of a budget that now stands at $330 million. This is a significant increase from Honorable Stout's 1995 budget debate, but it also shows the development of our islands and what government is now tasked with managing. As he believed, so does this government, that it will be through our education system that we'll be able to position ourselves to continue our social and economic leadership in the Caribbean in this new century. As Minister for Education and Culture, his audaciousness guides me and on many days encourages me to not be afraid to take the bold steps that are in the long-term interest of the young people and this country. His commitment to education and his legacy to ensure that Virgin Islanders have access to a modern and equitable education, just as their peers throughout the world, is the standard that we are determined that we in this government must actively pursue. We have started to do this in many areas, but this year we'll be putting greater effort in developing our school administrators and teachers so that we can create an optimum learning and teaching environment for our young people. We'll continue to challenge students in their academics, but also challenge them to become better citizens and stewards of this country like H.L. Stout was. They must learn to love and appreciate these islands, its history and its people, as they will be the ones responsible for writing the next chapter of our history. This week, we also celebrate Education Week 2016 with the theme, Instructing Every Child Through Inclusive Education. I hope this demonstrates to our community that we are taking every prospect to ensure that all of our students have the chance to receive an equitable education and have the chance to develop into independent contributing members of our society. The Virgin Islands will need each and every one of our young people to be active citizens, to challenge us, to work for our betterment, and to continue the legacy of our forefathers and the legacy of H.L. Stout. We ask that you support our efforts, our young people, our schools, and our community college, because as H.L. Stout demonstrated, it is through our young people and through the education system, we stand the greatest opportunity to develop the minds that will be needed to continue the advancement of this country. Dr. Allison Flax Archer recited a poem titled A Tribute to H. Laverty Stout, written by Mrs. Eileen L. Parsons in 1998. From the humble village of Long Bay, from the rock strength, iron will, and trust in God, of a very young widow named Idalia, Miss Dally, from the nurturing and loving, of older brothers and sisters and a very close extended family, from teachers at Zion Hill, Miss Norma, Miss Morris, Teacher Gladys, from the guidance of a white stranger, Major Watts, a man-child was formed and molded. And though no one knew it then, into that formation were without intention thrown all the ingredients of a leader. Undying faith in God, love of all races, kindness to fellow men, strength under pressure, ability to see the now, and an unwavering pride in the land of his birth. Our British Virgin Islands produced this man-child, and although like others, he could have gone far from the village of his birth and the friends of his childhood. He elected to remain. When his native land suffered, he suffered. When it prospered, he prospered. When it had reason to rejoice, he too rejoiced. And as he loved it, so he worked untirelingly, untirelingly for its well-being. I ask you now to look around his beloved British Virgin Islands. Remember, if you will, how we were. Consider, if you are fair, how far, how far we have come and how we have prospered. 
Now even his loudest critic will be forced to say and see, we are indeed fortunate that this man-child, Hamilton Laverty, chose of his own free will to live in his beloved British Virgin Islands. The annual refilling ceremony followed immediately at the Capoons Bay Burial Grounds with Premier and Minister of Finance, Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Julian Fraser R.A., and a family member of the late H. Laverty Stout paying their respects by laying wreaths on the first Chief Minister's laying grounds. Persons were allowed to reflect on the former politician and nation builder. Here's what they had to say. Events such as this uh, are more important than we attach to it. It serves commemorating Honorable H.L. Stout on a day like today. It serves to remind all people that the Virgin Islands have come a long way and it could only have done so by visionaries like Honorable Stout. What it also tells us is that if we were to once sit on our laurels, we can regress to where we came from. We cannot afford that, can we? That's why year after year, we continue to develop and develop in ways that are positive, meaningful, and it gives us hope for development that we take that we go through year after year. The younger generation of us that comes along will not know any of this unless we constantly remind them. I can recall going to a secondary school where there was 125 students. And trust me, I didn't know the kids from East End unless they had happened to be a part of that 125. It was a school that admitted 25 students a year. And you had to be lucky because you came from all over the territory to end up in that school. And it was only on August Monday when we go into town and you see these people your age that look strange to you, but they were Virgin Islanders. And then came H.L. Stout in 1968. And he gave us what we call a comprehensive school. That became the catalyst for what you have today. I spent a few years at this same site reminiscing about H. Laverty Stout. I used to tell jokes about what his involvement was with me when it came to his real estate and so on, because that's how I really got to know him. But this morning, um, I was having a conversation with Sister Brenda Letsamtai and Dr. Marcia Potter. And I'm going to publicly say uh, to the Premier and to Minister Walwyn that as Junior Minister of Tourism, <clears throat> I am proposing that this site be included in our historical sites as a place where tourists will be able to come and see and experience the history of our very first chief minister. I was also sharing a story with some people this morning. My colleague, Honorable Skelton, from time to time would send us information with respect to what's taking place in various Caribbean islands. And he sent us an extract from the Turks and Caicos Islands where a former chief minister, premier, was suggesting that on a national holidays, no other uh, immigrants from other countries should be celebrating any event uh, outside of what's taking place in the country. And if I may be bold, I would like to go on record and saying that I endorse that sort of thing. This is a national holiday where we celebrate HL Stout. And if anybody wants to do any celebration today, it should be done around this giant, this leader of our country. Thank you very much. Today for me, it's a lot of closure on a lot of levels. 
And so I want to, like uh, Mr. Christiansted, commend the family for continuing to take an active role in carrying on his legacy and reminding us generation after generation. I hope that the college will continue to be a place that represents his vision, his dream for the growth of this country, his great dream for the development of this country, um, and that we will continue to own it in a way. He said, and Mrs. Parson reminds me all the time, that one of the things he would often say is that he wanted a college for his people. Because once he was gone, he wanted to see everyone, regardless of what community they were from, wherever, that he wanted to see this country to continue to develop. And he knew that it was the young people for whom he was providing the, 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 um, the structure and the mechanism for an education, more and more education at all levels. He wanted to see that continue because he knew that it was going to be the basis for the growth and the continued leadership of the country. For the Department of Information and Public Relations and the Ministry of Education and Culture, I have been your GIS host, Bria Smith, reporting on the annual H. Lavishy Stubbs Commemorative Celebrations highlights. Thank you for watching.